Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our 10 a.m. service. My name is Pastor Josh. Welcome to Cornerstone Evangelical Baptist Church. We have a short video for you so that you can prepare your hearts for worship this morning. Enjoy. sing praises to him this morning. No matter what circumstance you're in or situation you're in, God is still good. Let's raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Of my enemies, 
sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. you're singing from your hearts this morning because it's all about God. And whenever we believe and know that he is for us, nothing will be against us. And so I want to give you this time just to pray on your own, to confess any sins that you may have, knowing that God will be faithful to forgive and to make you righteous and holy before him. Lord, we just thank you that you love us, that you care for us, that you fight for us. Lord, help us to do the same for those who are oppressed, for those who are suffering, for those who don't know you, Lord. We pray for all those who are going through many different things, Lord, but you know them. You know what they're going through, and you are the answer. So Lord, we just ask you for forgiveness this morning that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that we can come before you this morning holy, righteous, not because of what we've done, but because of what you've done on that cross. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
his blood or tone. But final breath and it was finished. But not the end you could have known. For the earth began to shake. And the veil was torn. What's that?
Good morning, church. My name is Serena, and I hope you all have had a wonderful week. First, we're going to enter a time of offering. And during this time, let's remember what Acts 20 verse 35 tells us. It is more blessed to give than to receive. For our first announcement, our CBC Without Walls, for the month of February, unity in the spirit also means being united in the knowledge of God. So let's dig into his word. This week, find Bible verses that describe who God says we are. Matthew 5, 14 tells us, you are the light of the world. Next, Lent began this past Wednesday on Ash Wednesday. Traditionally, Lent is an intentional six weeks of fasting and prayer meant to simulate Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness. Nowadays, Christians throughout the world prepare their hearts during this Lent season in many ways. Fasting food, giving up an activity, replacing that time with God time, etc. All of this to deny ourselves, just as Jesus denied himself, and to prepare our hearts for Easter. Pray about how God is leading you to prepare for Easter during this Lent season, and let's join our brothers and sisters across the world to take these next 40 days and 40 nights to prepare our mind, spirit, and hearts to celebrate our resurrected Lord on Easter Sunday. Next, for our spring CBS classes, they are open at www.cebc.net slash events. Grow deeper in knowledge of God's word to know his heart. We will have Roots class that we encourage all who have never taken it before, as this is the foundation of our beliefs and how we at CEBC live out these beliefs. And Secret of the Pretenders, which is a relevant class that explores different religious sectors and cults, explaining and understanding why are they not doctrinally sound. Download the church app, join the Sunday 10 a.m. group, or check out our church website at www.cebc.net for more info. Thank you and have a blessed Sunday. Thank you, Serena. And again, all those announcements, I know sometimes it's a lot of stuff, but you know, these are things that we want to encourage you with so that you can continue to grow deeper in your knowledge of God and to be able to continue building a community of believers. And so, you know, don't, don't feel like you're doing this by yourself. You know, partner with somebody to, to, um, to go through Lent and to sacrifice something and, and to keep up with each other, you know, pray for each other and encourage each other. And also, maybe you're, you, you want to learn more and you're not sure about these classes, you know, invite someone to go with you. You know, a lot of times, you know, we're not alone and we do have people around us to, to go with us and to help us and we can learn together. And so before we begin today, um, you know, I want to update, uh, for a lot of you, you may know our senior pastor, uh, Reverend Chanson Lau, and um, to give you a little uh, background, is last Sunday, he actually went into the hospital um, for an infection, and, and we got to talk to him, and, you know, he says, thank you for everyone's prayers. He says, the doctors are still checking me out and making decisions about what to do. And so right now he's in a good condition. They're just waiting to see how the infection will, um, will subside and as he's healing. So let's continue to pray for him and, and let's pray for him right now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you um, that you are the healer. You are the great physician. And Lord, we know that you are holding chance in your hands. We know that you're keeping him safe, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically as well. And Lord, I just pray that if it's in your will that you continue to heal him, that you continue to be with him. And Lord, may, may your healing in his life be a testament of your power. May your glory be shine, shown through him, Lord, through this situation, through all of us, his brothers and sisters, and, and this church and this body that is praying for him, Lord, and for the many people who are, who are sick as well. But Lord, we just pray that you will heal him, Lord, and that you will take care of him. And that as a church, Lord, we continue to glorify your name and to praise you and thank you even in difficult circumstances. So Lord, be with Chanson now, be with his family. I'm sure they're going through a lot of turmoil and confusion and things like that. But Lord, I just pray that you'll give them wisdom and wisdom for the doctors and the surgeons and the nurses to make the right decisions, to, to do their best to, to take care of your servant, Lord. Thank you. We pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so I think it's just so fitting as we're, you know, talking about this sermon series these past month or so, and we're going to continue talking about this sermon series called Live It Out. It is so difficult when we don't keep our eyes on Jesus, because when we turn our eyes away from him, then we are living not for God, but we're living for this world. We're living for our, our, ourselves, and these things don't 
last. These things bring death, is what the Bible tells us, when we live for ourselves, when we live for things that are not of God. And so I want to continue to encourage you to live out your faith. And you know, we just prayed for our senior pastor, and I want to use that as an introduction today because, you know, he's been such a a great influence in my life. And I get to hear a lot of his stories of how his faithfulness and how God brought him through the different circumstances that he went through. You know, a long time ago, and as you all know, you know, once upon a time, right, he, he's pretty old now, but once upon a time, he was young. And he was serving at a, a church, and he was one of the youngest pastors. And during that time, there were a lot of different people, I, I hear about this, um, were against him, right? Or maybe didn't agree with some of the stuff that he was doing, but he was faithful to what God had put in his heart. And Chance's heart, he always wants to love God and love his people. And so while he was a young pastor, he saw kids in Chinatown, and some of them were just out on the streets and not doing anything and not being in church. And, you know, he decided to go out and reach out to them and play basketball with them during Sunday, right, and, and bring them in and talk to them and share with them about who Christ is. And so, you know, I want to share about him a little bit because, you know, as he was putting his faith into practice as a young pastor, That is why we have this church today. Some of you who are watching now may be one of those students that he reached out to a long, long time ago when he was a younger pastor. And I want us to see this picture that when we live out our faith, God takes care of us. God does amazing things through us, not because of us, but despite us. But like David, he had a heart for God. And because he had a heart for God, God continued to protect him, continued to give him victory over his enemies. And same thing with Chance, and when he had faith, when he has faith in God, when he had faith in God, God used him. God protected him. God blessed him. And that is why we are here today, here at Cornerstone Evangelical Baptist Church, is because of that faith. And but not because of a man, but because of what God was doing. So I want to encourage you this morning, you know, as we live out our faith, as we're learning about these different characters of the Bible, that really it's not about these people and what they did, but it's about what God did through their faith. And so we're going to go into 2 Samuel, uh, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 25. This is verse 2 to 42, and I know it's a lot, but I want to show you this passage because, you know, there's so much in this passage about David and his faith his heart for God, and we see God's heart for David. We're not going to read the entire thing, but hopefully you get a chance this week and be able to read it on your own. But I want us to be reminded, you know, that even though a lot of times our circumstances do not fit what we expect, when we have a heart for God, his heart is for us. He will take care of us, but we need to be obedient to him. We need to continue to... um, to long for him, to seek after him, to know him more and know him deeper, which is why we have that challenge. And hopefully you get to go and look it up on Google, right? Verses, Bible verses about what the Bible tells us about who we are, what God tells us about who we are, our identity. One of the ones that I think of that I love is that we are salt and light of the earth. And I've been talking about how, you know, it doesn't matter how talented or gifted you are, God can use you because you were called by God for his purposes. You are salt and light. You do flavor the people around you. Good flavor, not bitter flavor. And you are light. You bring light into, this, uh, into the darkness of this world through Christ who lives in us. And so a little bit about David, right? Um, David is also the youngest son of Jesse, right? We talked about Gideon being this youngest and the weakest, and um, Chanson was also one of the youngest pastors. I'm one of the youngest pastors in this church. There's this theme, I don't know if you pick it up, but about God using the, the weakest or the youngest and, and to show his power and his glory. And so David is the youngest son of Jesse. Actually, a little fact too, David is actually the great grandson of Boaz and and Ruth, if you kind of know that. So a little fun tip there. Uh, When God told Samuel, Samuel was a prophet that God sent, and the the people of Israel wanted a king, right? They wanted a human king. And so God said, fine, I'll give you a king. And so Saul went, I mean, Samuel went and found King Saul, and Saul was their human king. But what had happened was that this king um, were doing things that were not godly. 
And so long story short, he failed, and God tells Samuel, hey, I want you to find a new king. Samuel goes, and he sees this family. He goes to the family of Jesse, and there's this seven sons, right? He looks at the eldest son, and he's like, all right, this is the guy. And God says, nope. And he's like, wait, what? But this is the, the strongest, the oldest. And uh, in that culture, the eldest son is the one who gets blessed, the son that you know, has the inheritance and everything, right? Um, but God says, no, I'm not looking at physical strength or the outward appearance. I'm looking at the heart. And so he chose David, a, a young kid who was just out. He wasn't even there at the time. He was, with, he was tending sheep. And so we learn about David, right? Um, Samuel anoints him as the next king, this young kid. And we know that he goes and he fights Israel's enemy at the time, the Philistines, and conquers one of the biggest giants, right? Warriors, Goliath. And after that, God continues to be with him, right? David has his heart for God and God continues to bless him. And Saul sees him and goes, wow, you're, you're a great warrior. Let me go and send you out. And so David goes out and God is with him. And so he wins all these battles with the enemy. Now what's unfortunate is Saul sees this and people see it too. And they're like, wow, David's a great warrior. He's even better than Saul. And so Saul gets really angry, right? Gets jealous and plots to kill David. And long story short, David escapes because of his friend, Jonathan, who is the king's son. And David is out in the wilderness. And, and all this time, kind of like how, you know, going back to like even John the Baptist, right? He sees heaven open up. God says, this is my son. And he waits and nothing happens. Kind of similar thing here too. You know, David, young boy, anointed as the next king. And all this stuff happens. And he doesn't get the kingdom that God has promised. But at the same time, David still has a heart for God. David cries out all, all in the Psalms, right? The book of Psalms. It's just David's heart crying out to God. God, if you're the one who is good, if you're the one who takes care of me, then remind me of who you are, right? Let my faith grow as you protect me, as you take care of me. And so he continues to have a heart for God. And so here we're going to go into this first part here. You know, we come to this part of the story where David is in the wilderness, right? This promised kingdom has not come yet. So many times he's just like waiting, waiting, waiting. It's so easy for David to just be like, you know, God, you're a liar. I'm just going to go and do my own thing. But no, he continues to have faith. And that's what I want to encourage you with. Where he continues to have faith. He continues to do the right thing. And God honors that. And here, unfortunately, at this time, you know, the prophet Samuel just passed away. And so now he doesn't even have somebody to, to help him, right? David is kind of on his own. But David's in the wilderness waiting for God's timing, right? But he continues to live out his faith. And here are some important lessons that we can learn. Number one, always do good to others. Now the title today is called His Heart, right? Um, our Heart for Him, right? A heart for God and His for you. And my main point, if you forget anything else, Right? God takes care of those who have a heart for him. And now what does that mean? How do we have a heart for God? And we're going to take a look here. Always do good to others. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 25. This is going to be verse 2 to 12. And it says here, A certain man in Maon who had property there at Carmel was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and 3,000 sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. His name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surly and mean in his dealings. He was a Calebite. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent 10 young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you! Good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my men, 
since we come at a festive time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered from my shears and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. And so kind of a little background, like what's happening here, right? David is in this, uh, this city called Moan, right? And Moan is a town in Judah, which is actually going to be part of David's kingdom. And so he is still here, even though he's not the king yet, right? He is still taking care of what God has kind of provided for him. And so there's these shepherds that are out in the field. And, you know, back in the day, you know, being a shepherd was not just, oh, I'll just stand here and, you know, take care of sheep. Um, The job of the shepherd is to protect the sheep from all sorts of danger, right? Lions and bears and wolves and and thieves, right? Who come in and steal um, because these are, you know, prized positions, that kind of thing. And so, you know, in this place, right? uh, David's people, are still doing what is right, right? Doing good to those um, who are God's people, right? We continue to do good. Um, But something I want to point out to you too, right? Why do we do good? It's because God does good for us. You know, it tells us in James 1.17 that everything, every good and perfect gift comes from above, And so all the things that you have right now that are good, don't forget that those things come from God. And now when we do good for others, we actually bring God's spirit into those things and we battle evil. And so here David is with his his men and taking care. They're like security guards, right? Protecting these shepherds and you know, it's during time, they, they need food, they're in the wilderness, and they go and they ask Nabal, right, this, this rich guy, and he's, they go to him and appeal to him, right, and tell him, hey, you know, we've been, you know, helping you out, and we're taking care of you, and can you take care of us? And Nabal doesn't even appreciate what they're doing. And so David's men turned around, went back, told David, and David got really angry. It was like, wow, all this and You know, this guy doesn't appreciate anything. You know, what does this mean? You know, it's not just about being nice to people. You know, when I think about, you know, always do good to others, it's like, okay, well, how can I make them feel better or make them happy or, you know, what can I give them and and things like that. And I know we talk about that a lot, right, as Christians. Go and share God's love and, you know, um, give offering and and help somebody in need. But I want us to kind of take a look at this in a slightly different way. And again, you know, David and his people were protecting the shepherds and what they were doing wasn't just being nice to them, right? They were fighting off enemies. They were fighting off, you know, animals. And, and David, if you remember, when he was younger, he was a shepherd too. So he knows what this is all about. And, and David was a mighty warrior even when he was a kid. He would actually fight against bears right, on his own, and lions. Have you ever fought a lion before? You know, things like that. And so, you know, I want us to kind of know that, you know, when we're doing good to others, that also means fighting for them, fighting off evil for them, right? How often do you pray for somebody? How often do you pray that God will protect them from the evil one? right, in in the way that they think or in the way that um, maybe there's fear in their life, how often do we actually do good by fighting for other people, right? And that's what David was doing here. You know, right now, we're in one of the greatest times of need. And I know a lot of times we want to stay home and and we don't want to go out, and, and that is fair, right? We need to be safe. At the same time, let's continue to do good to others by fighting for them, right? And when I mean fighting for them, I mean pray for them. Pick up that phone, talk to them, ask them how they're doing. Um, I know it's been a year, and now it just kind of, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like, you know, well, this is the new normal. Everyone seems to be okay, you know, but the evil one is still out there, 
right? We need to continue to do good to others. We can need to continue to fight for them. Um, one of the things that, you know, I've been doing nowadays too is to, to continue to be intentional about helping others, right? Not just praying for them, but also through action, right? This is the best time right now to continue helping others. How do we fight for them and care for them, right? Um, this may mean supporting local businesses, right? We still need to go to, you know, Costco and still need to go to like Lucky's and, and all these places to get groceries. You know, talk to the people that are working there. I'm sure they're scared too, right? Ask them how they're doing, you know, relate with them. Ask them maybe what they, you know, we can pray for them, right? Um, even though these are workers, they're still God's people. People, uh, God still loves them. And how can we be that bridge to continue fighting for them and bringing them to God, right? Um, you know, when you have built that relationship, you know, when it's time to harvest that fruit, when all is said and done and, and say we get to actually come together again physically, I mean, imagine the, the person that you were talking to, right, have been praying for when you get to share with them, hey, our church is open now. Like, do you want to come and, and, and meet all my other brothers and sisters in Christ and our church family? And I'm sure that they would be a lot more prone to coming and being more open to the message, right? That's why it's really important. Um, you know, lately I've been also, you know, not just praying a lot more. Um, that's been huge, just asking people what to pray for, um, just continuing to see what, uh, what, what life is bringing them through. You know, let's continue to be with people, right, in their times of suffering and need and to point them back to Christ. Another thing that I've been doing too is, you know, sometimes I'll, um, now that there's, you know, open dining and things like that, you know, takeout, things like that, I will definitely be more intentional about tipping a little more, right? Um, and then having conversation with, with the people that are working there. How are you doing? How's your business doing? Is there anything I can support you? And so again, you know, doing good to others doesn't just mean being nice to people or just saying like, hello, and, you know, I care for you, and, you know, hopefully one day you'll be fine. No, we need to actually fight for other people, to protect them from the evil one, to, to share with them real deep truths about who God is. And it's not that we're the ones fighting for them, but to let them know that God is fighting for them. God wants their attention. God wants them to know who he is. And this is the best time right now in this pandemic, to bring that truth into their lives. And so here, we see that David and his men, he doesn't have to do any of this, but he has a heart for God, and he chooses to continue to do good to those around him. But unfortunately, Nabal um, does not appreciate what he's doing, and so David has every right to be angry, right? Um, and since he wasn't going to help David, Nabal becomes this, this enemy, right? Nabal is the one who is hoarding all this wealth. Remember, he's a rich guy. God has given him all these good gifts, but he's not using it correctly. And so David chooses, right, and says, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to take what's rightfully mine. And he's going to go in and, and destroy and kill this lion, this enemy, Right? But remember the main point, you know, God takes care of those who have a heart for him, right? A heart for God, his for yours. Um, I chose this passage out of all the other ones about David because, you know, we have an unexpected character here, actually. You know, we're here and I'm talking about David, but uh, I don't know if uh, you heard me slip, uh, slip it in, but the Bible tells us about another person in this story, and her name is Abigail. So we're going to take a look here, 1 Samuel 25, 14 to 19. And this next point here is don't be afraid of doing the right thing. Again, God takes care of those who have a heart for him. When we are not afraid and we know what God wants us to do, we do it with courage. We do it with humility. We do it knowing, right, that we've, we've prayed about, it, that we know God's heart. And we're not afraid and we go and do what God has called us to do. First Samuel 25, 14 to 19. One of the servants told Abigail, Nabal's wife, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greetings. 
but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us, and the whole time we were out in the fields, near them nothing was missing. Night and day, they were a wall around us the whole time we were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do, because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. Abigail acted quickly. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five sias of roasted grain, a hundred cakes of raisins, and two hundred cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on donkeys. Then she told her servants, go on ahead, I'll follow you. But she did not tell her husband, Nabal. And so this unexpected character here, I love this, right? She comes out of nowhere in a sense, and, and she does the right thing. Right? You have the servant that comes to Abigail and says, hey, you know, David and his men, these are good people. They are with the Lord. We we know that this is good, but, you know, your husband Nabal is just throwing this away, and he's a wicked man, and he's selfish, and he's not doing all this stuff. Abigail, look at this. She acts quickly. Right? Don't be afraid of doing the right thing. You know, a lot of times, I think we always kind of second guess and We think too much about, you know, what we should do and how people react and things like that. You know, I want to encourage you to have faith. The Holy Spirit is in you, leading you, guiding you. If you've prayed about it, if your heart is for God and for his kingdom, and it is built in the foundation of Christ and love, unconditional love, don't be afraid of doing the right thing, right? And I'm sure that Abigail wasn't sure what was going to happen to her right? She is the, the wife of Nabal, and, you know, back then, you know, women were not even looked at as very, you know, highly, right? She could have been killed for doing something like this. And, you know, at the end here, right, she did not tell her husband. She's doing this in secret, right? She's doing this, and we're like, well, she's disrespecting her husband. But see, this supersedes that because she has a heart for God. She has a heart for the right thing. And so she's going to take her faith And she's going to go and do the right thing. She's not sure, but she's going to do her best. And so don't be afraid of doing the right thing, right? God rewards those who are obedient and loyal to him, right? Who are willing to do the right thing during a life-threatening situation. And that's exactly the situation we're in now, right? In this pandemic, this life-threatening circumstance. But don't be afraid of still doing the right thing, of fighting for people and caring for them. Um, You know, we're in this situation right now, right? Change Abigail to your name and then change Nabal to COVID-19. Right? How can you continue to do what God has called you to do? Right? Um, You know, this past week, uh, I've definitely felt, you know, um, saying attacking and and feeling discouraged and you know different people and different things had happened and you know i was just kind of lost right but something that i continue to remind myself is god you're with me god i love your heart because you love me so much lord how can i continue to do what you want me to do because that is what I'm here for. Even though there are people against me, even though there are people who, you know, say different things or, you know, they're wicked, there's always going to be wicked people out there, guys. But have faith, right? I continue to do the things that God wants me to do. I may not feel it at the time, but we have to take that faith to go out and do what God has called us to do. So continue thinking, what does God want you to do? How does God want you to reflect who he is to the people around you, right, at home, right? Whatever you're going through, don't be afraid of doing the right thing, right? Abigail risked her life to save others. She wasn't just saving her own life. She was saving the lives of all these shepherds and workers, and and actually, she is even saving her husband's life, right? Knowing that David is angry and knowing that this, this mighty warrior and his army is going to come and, and, and take things, she, she goes and pleads to David, not just for her servants and herself, but this also protects her wicked husband. And so don't be afraid of doing the right thing, 
right? Because of Abigail's um, courageous and humble action, you know, David decided to show mercy. You can read that on your own. Um, God took care of David through Abigail, and God took care of Abigail through David, right? We need each other, right? A community of believers who have a heart for God, his people, and are willing to do the right thing at the right time, don't be afraid of doing the right thing. And again, I said, you know, we're talking about David here, but I kind of bring this up because, you know, one of our visions for, for this worship service is to build a community of believers. You know, we are all God's children. That makes us family. And so we're not alone in doing the right thing and fighting for people. We also need to fight for each other, to care for one another, right? Abigail did that for her, her family, her people. And in turn, David showed mercy, and they were able to take care of each other. So let's go on with this story here, right? Because she was not afraid to do the right thing, number three, God will take care of the enemy. God will take care of all the things that we can't control. But as long as we are doing good to others, as long as we are fighting for their souls, as long as we're not afraid of continuing to do the right thing, the thing that God wants us to do, God will take care of the enemy. So take a look here. 1 Samuel 25, 32 to 39a. And it says here, David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who has kept me from harming you. If you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. Then David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said, go home in peace. I have heard your words and granted your request. When Abigail went to Nabal, he was in the house holding a banquet like that of a king. He was in high spirits and very drunk, so she told him nothing at all until daybreak. Then in the morning, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him all these things, and his heart failed him, and he became like a stone. About ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Praise be to, to the Lord who has upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with contempt. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing down on his own head. And so this kind of story here, right, with David taking care of these shepherds and, and going and asking Nabal to, to, to show favor, right, give them some food as they're, you know, helping him. And they deserve a little bit of something, but Nabal was selfish and didn't want to help, right? And then we have, uh, we have Abigail who comes and says, so sorry for my husband, but please spare us, right? Because David wanted to, to take care of business. But if we see this whole picture here, we see that because both of them, right, David and Abigail, lived out their faith, God took care of what they could not control, right? God took care of Nabal, and gave him what he deserved, right? David didn't have to do that anymore. God took care of it. And so I want to encourage you with this because, you know, it's all about God's timing. We need to continue doing the right thing. We need to not be afraid of doing the right thing because the Lord is with us. The Lord will protect us. I'm not saying physically protect us from COVID or things like that, um, but protecting us, our, our souls, our eternal life, our purpose, right? He's going to protect his kingdom. He's going to protect his children, right? And so we continue to, to do what God has called us to do, right? And let's remember that God will take care of the enemy, right? If we do what is right, who would be against us? I love this, 1 Peter 3.13, who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good, right? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. So I want to ask you this morning, who is your enemy? What 
is your enemy. And are you discouraged because this enemy keeps fighting, fighting you and, and stopping you from doing things that, that God wants you to do? I remember that's something that I was going through this week, and I'm just asking God, God, why is, why is this so hard? I know you want to do great things through me, and you know, I want to serve you, but why are there all these barriers here? And God is just, I think, teaching me to say, have faith. Continue to do the right thing. I will take care of your enemies. I will take care of everybody who's doing things that that are against you because you are serving me. And so who is your enemy right now? And I'll list a few and and see if it kind of hits some of you. Maybe it's your in-laws. You know, maybe it's your teacher or your professor who seems very unfair right now during distance learning. Uh, maybe it's school. Maybe that's, that's taking away your, your life and you know, it's not making you um, any more peaceful or joyful. You just seem to be more anxious and more stressed, right? Maybe it's school. Uh, maybe it's your job, right? Maybe it's not finding a job, right? Maybe there are things that are stopping you from doing that. Um, whatever it may be, I want to encourage you to do what is right to continue to take care of the things that God has entrusted to you. And so if you're a student, be the best student. Do your homework, do the best you can to glorify God, and through your actions, God's going to take care of the rest. I know sometimes you see so, we're so short-sighted, but in the long run, when we're faithful to God, and we continue to do things that he has called us to do, he will bless us the training that you're going through now is not in vain. When you are done with school and job and all that stuff, you will have the right attitude because you have a heart for God. And God will use all the things that he's using now to train you to trust him. And so continue to do the right thing. Don't worry about your enemy, right? Don't give up on your faith, right? God will take care of the enemy, Right? When we pray, when we fight for people, we are asking God to protect them, not us. We can only do so much, but we need to put our faith in God. Right? You may not see it now, but really having the right attitude in the heart towards God will benefit you and God's kingdom in the long run. Right here at the end, Abigail, beautiful, smart, she actually became David's wife after God killed Nabal. And David eventually inherited all of Nabal's riches, his wealth. Isn't that crazy? And so the very thing that he was just asking for a favor, he wasn't even asking for that much. But because of his heart for God, and because of Abigail's courage and her heart for the Lord, to humble herself and to submit to David, her king, who wasn't even king yet, because of their heart for God, because of their faithfulness. God blessed both of them and the entire family and and everything. He gave them more than what he was even asking for. And so hang in there. Keep praying. Do good to others. Fight for each other. Pray for each other. You know, don't be afraid to continue doing the right thing, right? Maybe you're sitting at home, you're just waiting for church to open, don't wait. The kingdom is here and now, and God is empowering you to continue to do what he has called you to do. Nothing can stop God. Not this disease, not shelter-in-place orders, not vaccines, nothing. When we have faith in him, do the right thing. Let God take care of what we can't control. You will always have enemies. We will always have people who disagree with us. We will always have people who are telling us we probably shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. But I would encourage you to have faith. Continue to have a heart for God. Continue to do the things that he has called you to and have faith. Be like Abigail, who could easily have been killed by her husband. But she was smart. She trusted God. She had faith. And because of that, God took care of her and the rest of her family. And so continue to have a heart for God. And remember that he has a heart for you. He will provide everything you need to do his good works. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that when we have faith in you, you can move beyond mountains. Lord, I pray that we can continue to take each step to know you more, to understand you, and to hear from you what you want us to do. Because Lord, here, when we live for ourselves, that only causes death, that only causes destruction. But when we live for you, you give us life, life everlasting. And it's not riches and things that we can see in this world, but we can see riches and treasures in heaven. And we can see things that are eternal, relationships, people who you love. Lord, I know there are so many people right now that we're, we might not even know or, or have talked to, but they're your children. They need to hear your word. They need to hear and know that you are their hope. So Lord, help us to continue doing good to others, no matter who they are, whether they are Christians or not, that we continue to show your love because that is who you are. You are good. And Lord, when we do good, Lord, we conquer evil right away. Lord, I pray that you take away any fear that we have because maybe we're overthinking things or maybe we feel like we're inadequate, but Lord, you tell us who we are. We are your children and you will give us everything we need to do your good works. We are your salt and light in this world. Lord, use us. Use us to, to glorify your name in this dark place. And Lord, take care of our enemies. Lord, sometimes we don't know why certain people do certain things, but, you know, you remind us in Ephesians 6, too, that, you know, we're not, we're not here against, um, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're, we're fighting against the, the things of the unseen, right? The evil and, and what dev the devil is doing. So, Lord, protect us. I pray for your protection over our minds, our hearts, and the things that we do. Lord, if there's anything in us that is not of you, I pray that you remove it. Lord, again, I ask for forgiveness that when we come to you, that we know that you will remove us so that we can be cleansed, that we can be vessels that you can use to bring about your glory. Thank you. Help us to live out our faith each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I know we're a little over time, but I really want to end with this song. And it's called Highlands. And it's a song that is birthed, um, the songwriters were reading Psalm 24, and it's a reflection of David's heart and how no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, God is still God. He is still good. He is still just as powerful as he is in the light or in the darkness. And so hope you enjoy the song. Mountains were where you hide. Oh, how far I'd scale the valleys if you graced the other side. Oh, how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending? from the source of its supply cause in the highlands and the heartache you're neither more or less inclined i would search and stop at nothing you're just not that hard to find I will praise you when the mountains in my way You're the summit where my feet are So I'll praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray Cause you're the heaven where my heart is 
in the highlands and the heartache all the same. Oh, 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 how, oh, how far beneath your glory does your kindness extend the path? From where your feet rest on the sunrise To where you sweep the sinners past And oh how fast would you come running If just to shadow me through the night Trace my steps through all my failure And walk me out the other side for who could dare ascend that mountain, that valley hill called Calvary? But for the one I call Good Shepherd, who like a lamb was slain for me. sing no less God within the shadows no less faithful when the night leads me astray cause you're the heaven where my heart is in the highlands and the heart it all the same Lord I just pray that you continue to show yourself to us we know how much you fight for us, Lord. And I pray that we can continue to have more faith in you to know that you will lead us. Lord, we praise your name even in this situation. Lord, I pray that we will not be afraid, that we will continue to do the things you called us to do, to love you and to love your people. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for guiding us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget we have prayer meetings on Wednesday nights. Don't forget we have CBS classes. Those are really going to help you to go deeper into God's word to know him more. So sign up for those, especially Roots class. So you have a good foundation of your faith and maybe learn things that maybe you, you wouldn't learn anywhere else about God. And so hopefully you will join us for a Connections Corner. Link is down below. And just continue to have faith in the Lord. I know we're in difficult times, but God is with you. Go and glorify him. God bless. See you next week.